a reading from the book of Sirach. Blessed the husband of a good wife, twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband, peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband. Her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is of surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. O oh Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things too sublime for me. In, In you, O Lord, I have found, found my peace. peace. Nay, rather, I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child, like a weaned child on its mother's lap. So is my soul within me. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus journeyed to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this, the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, A great prophet has risen in our midst, and God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Ignatius Loyola had a saying that I guess he must have cribbed from St. Monica. And it is, pray as though everything depends on you, then go act as though everything depends on yourself. Or pray as though everything depends on God, and then act as though everything depends on yourself. And certainly Monica prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for her recalcitrant son, who is more interested in uh, the glamour of public life and pleasure, but she also pursued him. He left Africa to go to Rome, she followed. He ran away to Milan, she followed, okay? Uh, we call that haunting, I think. Nevertheless, nevertheless, what happens is that he, Augustine, encounters Ambrose, of all people, in, Mon in, in, in Milan, and it's the preaching of Ambrose 
that persuades Augustine, but it was the prayers of Monica that motivated the entire thing. So we can give thanks to God for the, the spirit of prayerfulness that Monica has. Those of you who uh, uh, were on the last trip to Italy that I took uh, know that we had mass in the church in Rome of St. Agostino, St. Augustine, where his mother, Monica, is buried. And so her tomb is there, and whenever I go there, that's one of my pilgrimage sites to offer the rosary for my mother. It's a beautiful place, a nice quiet chapel up in the front and to the left of the, the main altar there. In our Office of Readings today in the Breviary, there is an excerpt from Augustine's Confessions talking about Monica, and I think it's worth a kind of a, a final note for us. She's on her deathbed now. She's lapsed into some kind of a fever, and it's going to take her life, and this is in the little port city of Ostia, about 12 miles outside Rome at the mouth of the Tiber River. And Augustine's brother is saying, wouldn't you rather, maybe we can hold on and we'll get you back home to North Africa and you can die in a much more, you know, familiar set of surroundings. You'll be happier that way. And Augustine in his writing says, she took one look at him like, what are you talking about? And she says, bury this body anywhere you want. Don't let it be a single care for you. Only this I ask that you remember me at the altar of the Lord, wherever you are. That's the spirit that we want to remember with St. Monica today, I think. So let us stand and pray.